Okay, so I had some problems with my phone storage, so I'm gonna have to fill you in a little bit on what we did when we started. Um, super simple. Okay, so we started with the drone on sketch, if you can see it, right here. So that was after the carbon paper. I have the video below on the timeline, so you can go back if you're unsure how to use carbon paper or if you don't have any. So what I did first is this painting up here. I have another one right here. It's, this color is actually a different color than what I used. I did that totally on accident, but it's okay because it's still a pretty color. The one on this one up here is turquoise and it's by Folk Art. This one that I'm using, I grabbed the wrong pink color, but it's still pretty. It's called Calypso Sky and that's also Folk Art. Okay, so let me, here we go. I'll fill you in on what exactly I was doing. I apologize, my, my phone has been all jumbled up with um, I have just so many pictures saved. I need to go through them. <laughs> but anyway, so I put a little bit of blue here and you're going to want a brush that's at least one inch. Mine's angled. It's okay if yours is flat. It's not really going to make that big of a difference. So I have the blue here. I'm just going to dab into it and then dab a little bit of the excess off. So we have it like this. And when you go and paint this, you are going to want to make X's. So you're going to be doing... Oh, I'm going to put a little bit more paint on here. You're going to be doing this. Almost in a figure eight motion. Just kind of make those brush strokes back and forth. Okay? Because you are going to get this look, if you can see here. Looks a little, like, rustic. It's just without, it ma without making it look, like, primitive. If that makes any sense. Okay? So... Pause the video right now until you finish doing the background. You can just pause and I'll be right here with the next step. So just fill in your whole background. And it is okay if you're painting over the letters and a little bit of your bumblebee. That's not a big deal. Okay, so go ahead and pause. And then when you come back, we will start with the black. Okay, so now when we start the black, you are going to take a smaller brush now. Mine's angled also, but it doesn't have to be angled. It can be flat. If you don't have um, a little square brush like this, a round brush will work just fine too. So we got a little bit of black on here. And again, I'm just taking off some of the excess so we have a little more control. And this, <laughs> when I did the carbon paper, I don't think I traced it as thoroughly as I wanted to because these legs are a bit different than the one up here, if you can see. But that's okay. I'm just going to go with it. We'll make it work. So um, you're just going to fill in each leg segment by segment. So we have the first segment. Fill that in. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. Okay, and you're going to do that for all the legs. I'm just going to touch some of these up right here. And like I said, the beauty of these online classes is you can pause it. You can take as long as you need to. If I'm taking too slow, you can fast forward. That is the best. I love taking online paint classes. Okay, so after you do all your legs, again, you can pause if you need to here. Um, after you do the legs, you're just going to do the little baby antennas up here. If you have a flat brush, just use that side like this, and you'll get a thin line, okay? So we have the antennas there. Okay, so pause until you get all the legs and the antennas filled in. Again, I apologize that I had to kind of fill you guys in. My phone ended up turning off. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, get some more black. And we are going to start at the bottom. So I'm just going to outline the bumblebee here on the bottom a bit. And actually, I'm going to outline the whole thing. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just the basic shape. Um, I'll do the wings too. Well, actually, I'll wait for the wings. Do this. And then we'll do this head. And then also, we are going to do inside of its head. So you're going to do this part and then also the eyes. The eyes are just these little lumps here. Okay. Okay, so I'm doing the bottom. I just put my point here 
I'm just gonna pull up. Okay, so we're giving it a jagged look like that, okay? And we're gonna do that alternating each section. So the bump, we're giving our bumblebee some stripes. Again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing some little flicks like this. I'm sorry about that. You can probably hear my three-year-old again. And then I'm just going to do the same thing all the way up the bumblebee. And again, you don't have to totally stick to your lines. That is just a guide for you. I see that? It's almost giving it that fuzzy bumblebee look. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do this top part of his head. I'll fill that in. I'm gonna give him a little bit of an extra stripe. Okay. And then I'm gonna leave this portion a little bit bigger. This black up a tiny bit because I do want a big pop of yellow towards the top. Okay, so we have those black lines. Really simple, you're just dragging like this. Super simple, and just go across in the stripes. Um, I'm gonna bring this down to a point a little bit too. Okay, so when you got your brush, we're gonna use the same one. I'm going to be using the Americana Deco Art. Primary yellow is what the exact shade is. So you don't need to taunt us. Just get a little bit of yellow. Again, we're going to use the same brush. And we're essentially going to be doing the same exact thing, just with yellow. Now, um, you might see the black and yellow kind of blending in a little bit. That is okay. That's kind of what we're going for to try to give it the illusion of the little fuzzies. So if you guys can see that, just doing the same motion as we did with the black. Now, with the blue especially, yellow it being a lighter color, sometimes you do have to go over it a couple times, especially if you're using a thinner acrylic paint, like um, the Apple Barrel paints, which there's nothing against so those you get from Walmart, they're like 50 cents. Those are, I use those all the time also, and um, the only thing is sometimes when it's a thinner paint like that, you do have to go over it a couple times, especially when they're lighter colors like yellow or light pink or different colors like that, because, um, just because they are lighter, so sometimes they're a little more sheer. So if you have to, you can do all the yellow stripes like we're doing here, and then just go back. Now if you guys see, I'm doing those jagged lines again, and it's kind of blending into the black, and it's filling in those negative spaces that are between all the lines that we did with the black. Okay, so we're going to do more yellow here, same thing. Okay, and then this big patch up here that I have. Okay, so you're literally just going to do the same exact thing the whole way up. Those little yellow and black flicking motions to give it the illusion of it being fuzzy. Okay, so do that. If, if, again, if your yellow's a little sheer, now's the time to go back. Like right here, I have a little bit of blue you can see through there. 
And you can see me just going back over that. That's just going to make it a little more um, of a stronger color. And then if you want, you can always go back in with black also if you kind of overdo the yellow. That's okay too. And I might go back with the black actually and shake this up a little bit. At the end, we'll see how it looks all together. Okay, so we have that. If you need to, again, you can pause it. So what we're going to do next is... That's, um, you can use this color. It's called Toasted Marshmallow. Again, that's the apple barrel color. I don't know how much of this I have left. I need to get some more. Um, I use this color a lot. It's just like a light tan or a light beige. I don't need a lot of this. So let's see. There we go. Okay, so again, that's Toasted Marshmallow. And we're going to be using that for his wings. Okay, so I'm going to make sure my brush cleaned off again, we're just going to use the same brush, do the same thing I usually do, dip it in, then dab off the excess. And first I'm just going to outline the wings. Again, those little lines on the inside of the wings, if you trace them, that is totally okay to paint over. And if there's blue in there, that's okay too, because if you think of um, really any bug's wings, they're kind of, especially bumblebee, they're kind of transparent. So if you see a little bit through them, that's that's okay. So we're just going to fill in that whole shape of the wing. Okay. over to the other one and do the same thing. So once you have that filled in, we're going to let that dry for a bit, and now we're just going to go in with some gray. So you're just going to take some black and some white. I have some black here still. I just got paint all over my hand. I have some black here still from when we did the legs and stuff, so I'm just going to take some of this white, some of this black. Mix it together to get a shade of gray. It's just a darker gray. Okay. And this is going to act as our first bit of highlights. Let me get this a little lighter, actually. Okay, so this one's going to be a little lighter. Okay. So again, I'm going to dab, out, dab off some of the excess, and I'm just going to highlight all the high points. Um, this being gray, it's just going to give it a little bit of a highlight, and then when we're done here, I'm going to use white to make some of the areas pop a little more. And maybe some of the black. I'll just put some little gray lines here. Okay, so we're just going to put little dashes, nothing too crazy, just wherever throughout the legs. Okay, now we're going to go in with just white. Again, make sure you don't have a ton on there. And we are going to do just the high point. So I'm going to do one down here on like that bottom segment of his leg, one on the top, and do one on each one. Just a little tiny dash. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing up here, and then I'm just going to do a little line on the antennas as well. 
Can you guys see that? So the gray is really going to help in here. We can even take some white and add a few lighter strokes throughout here. Cool. Okay, and then we're going to do the eyes also. The eyes, you're just going to take the white and just fill in a tiny little oval. Just take your brush and just wiggle a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of white and just kind of highlight up here. Okay. So here we go. That. Okay, next, I'm going to let the wings dry just a bit also. Um, now we are going to use a Sharpie. I think that's a little bit easier, especially if you're just starting out. Um, and it saves you a little time. You can use black paint markers or a thin black brush, but for this, I'm just going to be using a Sharpie. So I'm just going to trace over those letters that we drew on. Again, I like to use Sharpie and then I'll go back over it with black paint just to give it a more smoother finish because the Sharpie does, um, you can, you know how like canvases kind of have that like textured, um, it does kind of like show the little bumps on the canvas a bit. So you can always go back over it with black paint. Okay, see that's a lot faster than paint. But again, use whatever you feel comfortable with. Like I said, I probably will go back over this with a thin brush and some paint. But that doesn't look too bad, especially for some Sharpie. Okay. So next, that is still a little wet. So I'm gonna save that till the end because I'm gonna wait for that to dry because we are gonna put in the thinner lines with some black paint, so I'm just gonna wait. So the next part we'll do are the roses that are on here. So you're gonna wanna take, where did I put that? Your one inch brush again, um, at least one inch that we use for the background. And you are going to want, um, you can do two shades of pink, if you want different color flowers, you can always use different colors too. But I'm going to be using this magenta, and it's the Liquitex brand. So I'm just going to be using, again, this one's running out soon too. Okay. I'm going to use some of that. And then I'm going to use the Apple Barrel Pink Parfait. So that's like a lighter ballet pink almost. Actually, it's more of a bubblegum pink. Um, and then I'm going to get some more white. And that should be good for now. So you just want two shades of pink and then a white. So let's start with this magenta color. So that's one of my favorite colors. This one, it's okay to have more of a thicker consistency of paint on there because we, um, they're more like abstract roses. So sorry, I have a paintbrush hair on here. Um, so it kind of works with the blending of the paint. Okay, so you can kind of put the roses wherever um, and this one I put them um, two in the corner and then two up here. This one I did smaller roses. So it's kind of your own preference and how big of a canvas you're using. These were 11 by 14. These ones are 9 by 12, I believe. So I'm just going to start here. And kind of wiggle like this and just make almost a half circle. Okay, and then I'm going to do 
the same thing. Um, we'll do one here. See how I'm doing that? Just a half circle. Just do little loops. Just wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay. Do another one here. Now I am always doing flower tutorials or painting flowers, um, like little techniques for painting flowers on my page. And that's, that's free also, just because I love painting flowers. They're like my favorite thing to paint. <laughs> um, okay. So we have all of those. I'm going to take this light pink now, just kind of put that on our edge. And then you're going to want to do like this, almost like a rainbow shape. And you're just gonna flick, 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 flick. Okay, and imagine that there's like a point here because you want it like a rose, how there's a rosebud. And this is like giving an illusion of the petals. So you're gonna do the same thing here. Now it is gonna get muddy, which is kind of what we want, but on your brush, um, you want it kind of sharp. So it's okay to keep loading. And then you can also go around the edges too and just give it a little curl like that. This is a super easy way to give the illusion of a rose without spending a ton of time. These two colors together make a really pretty, almost like a violet color when they're mixed. It's really pretty. Okay, now we're gonna do this, make sure you can see. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing over here. I almost got in the paint. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing up here. And again, I'm just gonna go around the edges. If you do that and then just kind of do little scoops, that kind of gives it more of a full look. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the light pink again, do that. Just super simple. The key with this is don't think too much. Just do little rainbows, little smiley faces, and give it that shape. Now this is getting too muddy for my liking, so I'm gonna go back to that after I'm done and add a little more light pink. So now after I do those two shades of pink, I'm gonna dip into some white and just do the same thing. And then that's gonna mix in with your other colors. That is okay. Same thing to this one. I can go back with that light pink if I need to also. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a little more white here. Okay, I'm really liking that so far. I love those flowers. It's such an easy and effective way to do like abstract roses. Okay, so that's pretty dry now. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our thin brush. I'm just gonna get a little bit of the remaining paint off of there. So we're gonna go back to this little square brush we were using. Again, a round will work, um, a normal square, anything that's smaller we can make work. So I'm going to go back to this black color and I'm just gonna outline the wing. Gonna outline that wing very lightly again it doesn't have to be perfect just do your best to stay on that line okay then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here now be careful because these roses are going to be wet for a while just because we did use um, a thicker coat of paint Okay, 
So after you outline that, you're going to do the little lines in the middle. Um, if you use your carbon paper to kind of give yourself a guide, you can do that. If not, there's no set way. Just kind of make some lines throughout your wings. Okay. Do the same thing down here. to go over to the other side. Again, with this, you want to wipe off some of the excess as well. Okay. Doing the same thing for the bottom here. Okay, so there we go. It's really coming together now. Okay, so the last part, and this is probably one of my favorite parts, you are going to need either a palette knife. They're super cheap. You can get them at Walmart, little plastic ones like this. Or if you don't have one of those, these, that is totally okay. You can get a piece of even paperwork or like a business card of some kind and you can fold it and create like a hard edge just fold it a couple times and you can use it like that too but right now i'm going to be using one of these and again they're super super cheap a lot of times they'll come in a pack with um paint brushes so you could just buy a pack of them with these i think it's probably like three or four bucks and then you can do this whole painting and then have a bunch left over actually okay so i'm just going like this I'm just dipping into it. Okay. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to lay it on its edge like this. Okay. I'm going to pull a little, push down, keep pulling, and kind of vary the pressure. Another thing I'm going to do then after that is take some of the black and make sure I get this actual, the actual edge. Well, the thing that I struggle with, I know a lot of other people struggle with, you don't want to overwork it. I gotta be careful not to overwork it, so I just gotta leave it. Doing the same thing uh, I'll do down here. Okay, so I'm starting on the edge like this. this I'm not I don't want it too thick because the lettering is down here I'm just gonna do it like that go back in and we're just gonna do this tiny little area right here I'm just gonna go on its side push down kind of very pressure there again if you don't have one of these you can just use a business card or paper and just tilt it on its side Okay, guys, what do we think? I love it. This is one of my most popular paintings. I get people that buy, like, okay, I have three copies of this now, and I will probably sell all of them. So this is, like, one of the most popular paintings. You can use it as decor. You can sell them. Whatever you want to do, this is your painting, and you guys did it. It looks, I can't wait to see pictures. You'll definitely have to post pictures, because... This is one of my all-time favorite designs. Okay, so let me move you guys back up here. Okay, so um, thank you guys for coming. Make sure that you do like my business page. Um, it will it will be on here. That's where I'm posting from. You want to make sure you like it because I do give away a lot of free stuff and do a lot of free events with other artists. 
So you definitely want to be a part of that so you can take advantage of it. And then I also post all my upcoming classes and parties. So definitely be a part of that. And I'm so, so thankful you guys are here and I can't wait to see your paintings. Bye.